for the group stages that for later on it'll be more, like for today less of a big deal but yeah just for the main cast I'm sure other people would like that too Alrighty, um, I guess we're oh underway. <laughs> Are you ready, Ben? Yeah. Thirty seconds to battle. You ready to start? Oh, there we go. Okay. All right, everybody. We we'll get things underway in just a sec. Welcome everybody to the solo the championship here at TI4. The battle is underway. We've got our first match of today. It's the quarterfinals. We've got Dendi taking on Arteezy. I'm Gods, and joining me is Ben Merlini Wu. How are we doing? I am very excited to see some one-on-one -on -one matchup. I am a mid player myself, and I love seeing these fantastic players duke it out. And unfortunately, one of these players will be eliminated. I love both of these guys. Yeah. Dendi on Radiant, Arteezy on the Dire. Dendi just crushed this block too. Arteezy. Art, um, that's hard on Radiant too. Yeah. Well they, played. They actually went for very different builds. Oh, well, I'd say very different, but it's slightly different here. Yeah, Arteezy going for the two branches, Dendi going for the starting item Tango's, so with the extra regen, Dendi can definitely be a bit more aggressive as far as his lane's concerned. Yes, but Dendi did have the better block, but now the wave is going to be on RTZ side after this creep wave yeah. um, dies, so that's a little bit unfortunate for him. But in terms of CFs, they're actually both playing very, very <laughs> aggressively, and this is something that you see more out of the uh, out of style of Navi and EG players. They just love aggression from get go. They yeah. won't be bottle. I mean, they will be bottle crowing, but they're not concentrating on that yet. Yep. And for those of you wondering about how this works, the format and all that, it's first to one kill or tower. It's a best of three, so game one is going to be Puck versus Puck, game two is Quap versus Quap, and then if it does need a game three, it will be Shadowfiend versus Shadowfiend. That's for all four quarterfinals. Uh, the player list are TZ, Dendi, Resolution, FY, Ferrari, and two others whose names currently Luby, Mushi, and Ice Ice Ice. So those are the eight players that you'll have competing in this tournament. So. Still very even. Neither play with any denies, but 1v1 mid, you don't really need to actually get the deny. It's all about like the su the pseudo denies, really, more than anything. Yeah, both are almost exactly even in terms of CS. 8-0 and zero for RTZ, 7-1 yeah. for Dendi, and both of them have actually opted for the 2-0-1 build. I expected them to go like a 1-1-1, one, 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 maybe even a 1-2-1, one, one, because silence is just so important at like, killing these, killing each of these players, and look at RTZ, Sash, he's actually going for a Null <laughs> Talisman. It's the, it's the RTZ way. Yeah, but at the same time... Like, it, it's so difficult to kill um, very early on, and if you don't get Bottle Crow, you're going to lose out in the yeah. War of Attrition. Well, look, he's lost 1v1s by not buying enough Nell Tallies, so he's like, I'm going to I'm gonna stock up, get at least a, a couple, maybe a couple more, and go from there, but we'll see Dendi saving up money, so I imagine Dendi going to go for a fast bottle. I think he scouted the fact that the room was top, like he poked his head up there. If it was a DD mate or illusion, maybe goes and gets it, but Invis is not going to help him last hit at all, so until he has his bottle, he doesn't really care about picking that one up at all. Oh, Dendi getting aggressive here! I think Dendi has a cell. Nulls. But oh. there's two nulls! I, who's actually going to win this right click war? Arteezy's trying to battle this one out. I think he realizes he's right not going to win this. He needs one more hit. Oh, that's not... Oh, that was Very so good. close. Oh my goodness. But Puck, he does have the upper edge. Or sorry, Dendi has the upper edge with a yeah. self. And I think he's and trying bottle. to use that. Does he get both? Uh, it's coming now. Jeez, that's that's ugly. Arteezy's going to go base. Uh, he has to. That's... That, I think Dendi actually could have killed Arteezy there. He had 63 HP. I it he probably would have taken two hits. Again, but... it, it was gone cooldown. Yeah. Uh, he would have gotten one more hit. He would have probably been in single digit HP, but not actually died at that point. But now Dendi, Bottle Crow, 
didn't drop his null, so not super effective. Dandy's there, a gentleman, but... he's not bottle crowing. Kuri's going back to base. Well, he doesn't need to, he got the rune. He's a magic stick coming as well, so all about that magic stick life. And Arteezy's got a TP back, he's already he's committed to the null talisman. I don't think the null talisman build is worth it in this scenario. It gives you a decent amount of damage, but at this point, like your orb and stuff does so much more damage in your right clicks. And Puck's actually going for a 2 0 2 on Arteezy. What is this <laughs> double face shift? No silence. He's going to get wrecked, I, I, or so I feel. Oh uh, man, this this can't be serious. Usually, you you want max face shifts for team fights, for using your blink dagger afterwards. But not in it, a straight man fight. Like, what are you actually waiting for? If you're waiting for the cooldown doesn't change, so yeah, the cooldown doesn't change. You just sit in there a little bit longer. And Dendi getting another rune. Nice use of his reward there. Um, the other rewards are actually really, really important in one on one. Come the first night time. Yeah, Artezi is just gonna play maybe like a war of attrition. Just look to last hit for days and never you go can, for kills. But he could. Puck has, or Dendi has. I, I keep calling him Puck and whatnot. But Dendi has almost infinite mana at this point, especially with yeah. far better rune control. Yeah. And he has much greater kill potential because Arteezy can't even silence Zendi. So if he, I guess Arteezy can just farm creeps. He's never going to kill Zendi. the problem, though. That's it. He doesn't have that much more base damage though. 81 versus 70. That's not that yeah. much more. The one now, Arteezy now gets his bottle, so he's going to bring his bottle out. He can bottle crow as much as he wants. So he gets a third point in the orb. We're not seeing any waning rift yet though, which is surprising. Oh, nice dodge by Zendi. He baited out the illusory orb there and. Now Denny playing very, very aggressively. Not going to commit to this kill. Gets him down to 250 HP, but that's as the bottle arrives, and the Curry is going to hang around. It's going to be some bottle crowing, although it's not actually an upgraded courier. He actually leaves one charge on there, so... It's a lot of money to upgrade that courier. Do you think... At what stage do you actually look to upgrade the courier? Do you think Arteezy is going to do it as soon as he has the money, or is he going to get stuff like Boots first? I think he should do it ASAP. Boots. Wow. Oh! Dendi going in with the coil! Breaks the coil, takes all the damage there. Dendi has a follow up orb, Arteezy. Side oh, wow. Okay. If, if he cast that earlier, uh, as it followed, oh my gosh, that would have been so next level. So Dendi with two kill attempts, Arteezy is the still same, though. That's the, that's the scary thing here. Like, Dendi, like, it looks like Dendi is owning right now, but end of the day, the CS is more or less the same. Well, yeah, Arteezy is using a lot of his mana to farm creeps, and actually, Arteezy is almost at full mana right now. Yeah, doesn't so have the HP, but his bottle will arrive again soon. Dendi, Basser Ring picked up, probably starting to think that he can just push out the wave, do some damage to the tower. If he's not going to get kills, uh, your next objective, or your other objective, is to get that tower. So Puck, oh, Dendi gets a DD rune. And, and a Bassy, which is a little bit unusual, but the win condition for this 1v1 is first tower or first kill. And if Arteezy yeah. has to go home again, that's like at least a third damage on the tower. Arteezy's going for a kill against the DD rune Puck. He orbs to the high ground here, wants to go back in after bottling up, avoids the orb here, Dendi. Gonna go back to safety to his tower, bottles up as well. He's also very low on mana, has an orb soonish, but... Easy. You can tell that both these players play Puck a lot too. Oh, he's going for this! Then he's got a DD room, but he's on the low ground. He needs to get the high ground advantage and gets himself back to his tower. Arteezy almost gets a kill there. Yeah. He's battling against a double damage rune Puck and comes out on top. Dendi's got to go back to base. His position is just so incredibly good though, as Dendi is forced to fight from downhill. He has vision, but it's either you walk uphill and you lose two last hits, and then Arteezy can yeah. just bounce because he had the coil there, or you stand there and fight and have to deal with that very high miss chance. Not very high, but high enough. Do you, do you think either of these plays actually has an advantage as we stand right now? Um, I would say no, because Dendi's going to TP back, he's going to have like almost full HP and mana, RTC is too, both of their coils are pretty close to being off cooldown, and 8 minute rune has not gone to anyone yet, so I would say no advantage either side. Dendi's been all about the runes, RTC, no vision of them, Dendi actually spent 150 gold on wards to get high ground vision as well as rune vision, uh, guaranteed, got them all 3 runes so far, but end of the day, RTC's just sitting back, farming, playing passively, bottle crowing now that's available to him, both pucks, uh, very even on CS, Dendi with half a level advantage, but that's not going to win you this game. That one kill, that one tower is going to be what decides it. And I think the three levels of waning rift, though, is might seal the deal for Arteezy. And this is actually not terribly uncommon in an in versus in matchup where silences aren't actually that useful. You have to go for mass right click damage because that's going to be the most significant yeah. source of your damage. Well, and Dendi starts damage on this tower with his. A creep wave, a siege creep, and all that, but at the end of the day, he did less than 200 damage to this tower, so bit by bit, maybe he brings the tower down. Did force out a glyph, but. 
much of a difference maker is that going to be? And now Dendee picking up boots in the stash. So this is kind of like the stand and fight build. You don't want to be the first person to run. Oh, just going to break the core there. Dendee's got max winning rift. Arteezy could be in a lot of Oh, oh no! Oh. He's still got magic six first blood, Dendee. That's your GG. Game too, too many runes for Dendi, I think. That's the yeah. really what broke Arteezy's back. And he had that really nice turnaround. I didn't see that one coming, but in the end, Dendi does take it. He just was able to put out so much more pressure, and I think his skill build was and item build was far superior. Yeah. I'm still not sure why Arteezy went for a second null instead of a bottle, and I don't know why he didn't skill waiting rift. The second point in phase shift, I uh, maybe a misclick. There's not really any real reason I, behind it.